There is one rule you need to know to become an efficient lurker. I'm going to teach you how to understand the concept of pressure. Welcome to Lotus Lab. Today's episode is, is going to be about lurking and how to become better at lurking. It's one of the most important aspects of ranked and pro play as well, of course. And you need to understand that you don't have to lurk every single round. But when you do lurk, you need to create the constant, like, fear for your opponents that you might be somewhere on the map and one of the main issues that i see when i play ranked is that the the ranked lurkers they do not understand when timings are being made and when they can be abused by a lurker oh no why are you bullying me i'm gonna mute my pc so we don't get this so the concept of pressure is incredibly important to understand. Pressure is being made by your teammates. So we're going to showcase now how it looks on the minimap. So we, we're going to take Ascent. And on Ascent, we're going to have the most standard way of playing. So we're going to have um, Sova, Jet, KO, B attacking uh, B site, right? And then we're going to have a Cypher controlling um, either A main or top mid. And then on the defender side, we have very standard setup. So Kildry on B, Omen Market, Reyna on Pizza, and there's a Jet and A main and Sova on Short. Very standard. Typically also they just like swap between each other. So we have um, Sova and Jet, like ex uh, they exchange positions to use the arrows as well, right? So the thing is, the lurker, right? The lurker in this position, he needs to wait for his teammates to create pressure to create a domino effect. I already explained all of those concepts as well in other scenarios in Lotus Lab, but if you never watched it, uh, make sure to go back to those domino effects as well. But what, what do I mean here is that as a cypher, I'm putting myself in a position where I have an objective, right? And my objective as a lurker is gonna be either getting information about rotations or getting space that the players from the def defense are leaving, right? So you have like those two main objectives that are that you have to do as a lurker, either gaining information and get that information to your teammates or gain the space that the opponents are leaving for you. And both of those things will not happen, right? You cannot do those things if the team is not creating pressure. So now let's assume our team attacks B main. They move into B main, they put the smokes, they use an arrow on site, they use some flashes and create pressure. The defenders now have to react. They're probably going to pop the nano swarms. The turret is going to get destroyed. Right when it's destroyed, they don't know if someone is already on site and so on. The omen is getting smoked off. The killer is getting smoked off or the player on, on stairs is getting killed. And that creates now enough pressure for the other players that are playing on the other side of the map to react to that. So those three players will now rotate. There will be the domino effect, if you will, from that pressure being created onto B main. So the jet will go and either will go into short and rotate to spawn or will push into A main or will push into short and jump mid, right? The same goes for Sova. So those players might move like this. So they're going to go through short and jump down mid. And now your job as a lurker is to understand why what is happening, right? and how to prevent or gain like an advantage from this position. But all of this can only happen if your team is already doing the pressure onto B main, right? If they like pu pushed here. So you cannot show yourself earlier. You cannot show your position before that happens. Because if you, for example, like your team is going into B main, but they're not, not doing enough pressure to create a, a domino effect. And you peek into A main, into Sova just holding you and you die first. That's your fault. You didn't do your job properly. So you need to look at the minimap and understand how much pressure is being done. When you see the jet is dashing onto site, that means that most likely the A players are now rotating, right? And they choose one of the three options, short, A or spawn. So now if you put a trap, on the A main, you most likely know that people here are not rotating through this from the from this side, right? So you can just leave this and guard top mid. And when the top mid you hear the steps or jump downs 
from here, you can wait a little bit, trigger discipline, try to get one kill. And if you think you don't even need to get a kill because you can just give the teammates like the position that they are both in going into B main, that's also pretty important because then you can go on to short and shoot them in the back or go into short and go onto A side and get that space while your teammates are going to fall back and kill those two players, right? But all of that is being made just because there's being pressure being done onto B side, right? So you need to understand why it's so important to have a goal in your mind already when you log in into the round. Now, to keep this example um, still relevant, this is why it's so crucial as well to understand that you should probably have a full setup of your utility pre-set up before the round barrier drops, right? So when I'm starting the round, I'm putting the, both of my traps already and I probably have a camera already somewhere set up. I can leave a camera on, on this edge of the wall before the round starts. I can leave the camera on top mid um, when the barrier drops, right? I want to use my utility pieces as early as possible so then I don't give away informations a little bit later during the round. Where am I? right and then i wait for the teammates to create that pressure which will create the effect of the domino for the players to rotate right and the most important thing is to also understand that if you're going into a main for example right and your teammates now are creating pressure because they went onto b side with the chat and this sova is pushing into you right you have to make sure that you're taking a fight because this person should not feel that there's going to be someone in front of you, right? So if you get this kill on this Sova, and this is, your, this is your success, this most likely means that now you have an opening to take the space on A. Because if the Sova started rotating, then you probably heard also the jet, and if she went back mid, then you have an empty space created on A that you can take advantage of, right? And even though your team already did an execute on B with the jet, you can still call for a rotation if they didn't commit with the rest, the rest of the players, right? It all depends on the context of what's happening uh, what's happening um, onto the other side of the map. But it's very important as well to understand that in ranked, the players that are going into B main typically are getting scared of the first type of execution. So if the jet didn't like dash through the mollies, those players are not coming through because they are worried that they're going to get 50 damage, right? You have to like really be aware of what's happening on the minimap to be an efficient lurker. And what is even more important is let's, let's talk a little bit about the different situation. Let's say um, now the team is going towards A and I'm a B player, right? So as a B player... I'm going to have a uh, challenge in front of me because when I'm going to be playing into a B or B link, the Killjoy is going to have control over this and I'll have a different task and I have to even maybe change the way I play just because of this, right? So when my team is going to go towards A, I will probably not even wait for my teammates to create pressure because my objective is going to be to destroy the turret from the B player, or maybe destroy the uh, alarm bot from mid. As a cypher, that's almost impossible, right? Because you have no absolutely zero piece of utility to help you with that task. But the, ta the turret from B is an unachievable one. So when my teammates are working towards A, and it's a longer road here, right? Because they have to go through two essentially choke points, one and one, right? So this takes time, typically. I have the opportunity to go into B main with a camera, right? Because I can just use the camera here, check what's happening. Uh, if it's not destroyed, then I know that I can go forward. I can check the other corner. And now I can use one of my cages to make sure I can destroy the killjoy turret, right? So I can put the cage somewhere like this to create a pressure on site as well because it leaks. And now from this cage, I can destroy the turret without being spotted, right? Or you can just do whatever you want with the cage. Just make sure that it helps you cre creating enough um, uh, enough an angle or, or enough of, of, of a, a line of sight for you to destroy this turret. Once you destroy the turret, you created your pressure enough of yourself that it helps the teammates to push into A side, right? 
and then create another wave of pressure that you can use because with with this killjoy turret here you're not able to lurk into it right as long as the killjoy turret is here you cannot really go through it unless the players will already leave and then you can go with the cage onto site but that is very very hard to do on maps like ascent which don't have a lot of space now so when the situation is like this destroying your the turret is the mini objective that you're aiming for and after that you have an opportunity to do so many things right let's say this is the our scenario in the game i destroyed the turret so that's my mini objective done and now i can leave the camera on b main like this right and go into b link and now control the rotation because when my teammates are pushing through a main and i am very patient now on b link I can understand how many players and from where are going to be um, retaking the A site. But because I created a pressure, created pressure with the turret, turret situation on B, the killjoy is going to be most likely very late and she's going to be very anxious about a potential late lurk onto B site, right? So my own action in this particular situation enables a potential lurk for me. But that was my objective, not the team's objective, right? And now when I'm in B-Link and I still have one cage left, right? I can create another portion of pressure using the uh, cyber cage to, for controlling mid to deny the informations and then standing either in server or going forward towards short is another portion of something that you can do as a lurker and you can still do your job as getting information about potential um, rotations because you might hear players rotating from market towards pizza towards a heaven right or lurking late when your teammates are going onto site destroying the alarm bot and going back right all of those like mini objectives that you have is something that you can achieve as a lurker and you can still have incredible amount of um uh let's say efficiency being done towards your enemies without getting a single kill right it's one of those things that you need to understand that you, you are putting a task for yourself as a lurker um, when you know which side of the map is being guarded by the opposing sentinel. Because if your team, so let's say, let's say it's, it's a rule that we follow, right? Opponent's team is playing sentinel on B and our team is going A. Our goal is to destroy opposing Sentinel's utility and create potential pressure, which then can enable us to lurk or gather information about rotations. If the situation is different, the lurker, sorry, the Sentinel of the opponents is B, and I am playing A as a as a, as a Sentinel, then my objective is to be patient and use the space created by rotations or gather informations right and it's for me to understand what i need to achieve as a lurker in this concept and of course when you are playing a lurker your comps are instrumental you cannot be a silent player when you are being a lurker because that will essentially completely negate whatever you want to achieve right because just saying stuff like uh, the player from short is now rotating and he's going through mid is so vital. Like, let's say I'm playing B link. My teams are executing A. They killed the Sova and now the jet player is on, on, on short, right? And I know that because he makes sounds and he goes like top mid. Getting this information is big enough. You don't even need to get a kill of this player because, and that's another thing, when being a lurker, sometimes not getting the kills is actually the play let's keep this example so our teammates are going towards a they kill the sova remove him and the jet doesn't want to stand against the players on a and she goes top mid but i'm b link and i know that she's making noise and she goes here i can literally not kill her but tell my teammates that they are being flanked because what this right here created it created a gap so i can either go towards short because the jet went into a main and i with this gap created i can be unsuspected completely on tree right or in any let's assume that there's no alarm bottom mid or i can just literally use the mid in this situation to 
exploit the gap that was created by Jet, because if the Jet pushed from mid and I waited it out, then players from, from B that are rotating through, uh, through spawn will never suspect a player going from market, because why on earth would there be someone there if our Jet pushed? And no, I should have. Right? All of this is incredibly vital to explain to your teammates. So you need to make sure that you transfer the information that your teammates are relying on. Because if they rely on the fact that they get info that the jet is flanking, players can be aware to hold the to angle later in the post plant. Um, when I know that two players from market are rotating as well, they're going to go double into heaven. You can say that multiple players are going heaven. All of that builds an idea in your teammates' head on how to expect in a few seconds. You know, and that's why it's so important as a lurker to have great comps, but they don't have to be complicated. It's all about saying one short going a main, uh, two from market going heaven, and and so on and so on. Like those are those are very very simple comps. Or when you actually let's say let's let's assume that there's no sentinel's utility on B, right? One of the most simple examples are uh, how efficiently. Uh, you can use your comms while lurking. Let's go back to this example over here, right? So this basic setup, our team is going aggressively on A. They have a successful opening. Sova dies, Kayo dies, Jet dashed on site, and players are on site. The Jet from short doesn't see jack shit because she smoked off, right? And that this pressure created here after eliminating Sova and losing Kayo makes the players from B rotate. Now, when I'm doing this, and, and the players are going like this, right? I can still tell my teammates, B is clear, can you go back? Rotating from A to B on Ascent is not viable, by the way, but I'm just going to keep this map as an example. But it's still an option to do that, because if you say, B clear, go B with Spike if you can, right? Allows maybe the Omen to TP, to old site now because you got the space, you got the information that the players left the B side because you heard how a player from stairs went to CT and you went and you heard how Omen from market went into pizza. All of that allows you to create an opportunity for your team. But again, comms are vital, right? And also make sure that when you are the lurker on maps like Ascent, right? Make sure to instruct your team to not rotate through mid. I cannot express how important this is. Let me do another example. I'm lurking into A. My teammates were creating pressure onto B, right? And we know that A is completely clear. So I got the space because, I don't know, I killed the player on A or something. And I know that the other players rotated from, from short to spawn. So they are like something like this. The map looks something like this. And I'm telling my teammates to please go fast A with the spike. But please go to spawn. Because otherwise you're going to have to walk through mid while the opponents can actually hold you from market and get a vital kill. The only way you can cross here is if you have a smoke that you can miss, use on bottom mid to make sure that you can cross to short not spotted but many people in ranked at immortal free will not give a fuck will not use a smoke or will go there without a smoke die on mid leave the spike and that will make your lurk completely unsuccessful all right i hope you guys learned something um there's there's ton of other videos in my lotus lab that can be used while lurking but they're not exactly tied to lurking one of those would be um, the pressure video that is about using smokes to create pressure. That's one of the videos I would also um, advise uh, to watch. Um, if you're on Twitch, you can use it exclamation mark pressure to, to trigger the, the bot to give you the link. Or uh, another video that I would recommend is watching the domino effect that I can remember the episode number, but there's a cipher on the thumbnail with dominoes. All right, hope you guys learned something today. We're going to see each other... Um, with the next video consider subbing and so on and by the way i'm streaming now every day on youtube as well because we can multi-stream so see you guys around bye bye